whoever owned a French car, you know how different they can be compared to a German or Japanese car. This is the Renault Megane RS 250 Cup and it is the car with which Renault actually initiated the battle which manufacturer is going to have the quickest car on the Nürburgring. This particular piece is my own car and let me show you all the weird quirks and interesting features this car has. And so let's start with the with the design, the exterior. Compared to a, like a Civic Type R or something crazy like that, this is just an ordinary looking hot hatch until you come closer and uh, see some of those unique design clues. The, the front splitter, the wheel arches which are very wide, the rear diffuser or the spoiler. It may look like just an ordinary Renault Megane but People stop by and ask how much horsepower does it have or what it actually is and most importantly how much is the fuel consumption. So yeah, people see that it is different. And then there is this engine. By numbers this is quite an, a standard stuff, it's a 2 litre 4 cylinder with a twin scroll Mitsubishi turbocharger. 250 horsepower from the stock but the interesting fact about this engine is that it comes from the 1982 the series within it is is called Renault F-Type and that comes from the 1982 and this engine it was actually in the very first hot hatch by Renault the Clio Williams sitting inside you realize that these seats are quite comfy and very supportive on tracks and sporty driving and they were also very expensive when you opted to have them they are, these are Recaro seats with the Renault Sport badging and they are also very nice to look at then the, the driving position is quite okay for a hot hatch I have set much higher in the Civic Type R or, or the Focus RS and there's also a plenty of space for your legs and arms and ev everything. Much bigger man than me could sit here and feel comfortable, I believe that. The interior itself is, is nice, it, it is okay, but what I don't really, really like about this interior is the plastic, the materials. Here it is. And the passenger one, the door handle does that as well. This is the plastic you will touch every time you sit in the car and this is very very bad. And another thing I don't like about it is that the body shell is not very tough. I mean that you can hear those those uh, cushions, those carpets, then the, the every the, the panel, you can hear them making noises going over over bumps or anything. I have experienced much tougher uh, body shells and you can feel it and this is not that. I would expect something more rigid in a hot hatch like this, this series. The steering wheel is, is okay, it's very nice, not too big, not too small, but I don't really understand why the cruise control is here, the plus and minus, the resume and cancel is another button here and then there's the switch to turn on and off the speed limiter and the cruise control here under your arm those that's three places three buttons to, to control the cruise control and i understand why why three but just one lever or anything that would be much easier and about the cruise control when you have the cruise control on you see there you cannot turn off or turn on the sport mode it will make sound like this you need to turn it off and then you can turn off the sport mode or to turn everything off like this and there's the button this one about the dashboard I really like it, it I like the the yellow tachometer but it could have been in the middle but that's that's quite okay what I like about the dashboard is that you have these 
things like fuel consumptions, basic stuff. But then you have rear and front tire pressure. So you can check your tire pressures in each wheel and whenever you get a puncture on like something, like you're suddenly losing air, it will give you a warning that you are losing air and it might be a puncture. And on track you can just monitor your tire pressures to, to be safe. That's, that's, that's very useful. Another thing which is very useful is this display on which you can turn something which is called the RS monitor by pushing these two buttons. And you have boost, throttle control, torque, power, brake pressure, oil, intake temperature, lap times, acceleration, g-forces and pedal map, that's very nice also. You have modes like snow up to an extreme and uh, changes the pedal, the throttle uh, reaction. One of the least enjoyable things uh, regarding driving in this car is this shifter. And I don't mean the looks, it's it's quite okay. But the shifter feel, it the throws are decently short, not very long, but the feel is rubber-like and the shifting is not very precise or accurate. It could have been better. On the other hand, those pedals the, the position of the pedals is very nice. The brake is, you see, it, it is quite large, but the, it is very close to the throttle, so you can do those heel and toes very easily, very easily, and it is very enjoyable. I like this one, really. What I like very much about this the seats is not only the, the badging, the Recaro and the Renault Sport, I also really like these yellow seat belts and all five of them are yellow and that's a very nice touch and you will get a feeling that you are sitting in a in a very special car and I like that one very much. And besides the human space inside the interior which is enough for four people to go on a holiday this boot is large enough for luggage for a holiday or, or anything similar you can fit four tires inside with the rims naturally or anything you can fold the seats then so it's not just a, a nice track car but also very useful daily car another sensible thing to do would be to check out the service costs you know as this is the front wheel drive hot hatch it needs to turn power and brake by those front tires the front wheels so it needs a lot of traction and therefore the front suspension is very complex and uh, naturally very expensive. Those are lower control arms, upright control arms and then there's the hub carrier on the upright arm. And to, to service all that front suspension you will need like two, two and a half thousand euros. So consider that. I had to do a lot of that myself to have this car reliable and uh, and being able to rely that it won't break up somewhere. So yeah, owning a French beauty like this needs either understanding or love towards French cars. And I have respect towards Renault Sport and I was willing to try out myself a Renault Sport, the Megane, myself and that's why I have purchased it. It is a very very good track car and it is an okay daily car. And good thing about them is that they are now like a half price of the new one. So you can get a, a model like this for I don't know 14 grand euros and that's not too expensive. So I hope you like this video and consider subscribing for more vlogs like this. I try to do them more. So stay tuned and cheers!
sweetheart. Hello, 